Hey everybody, welcome back to Jim's Garage. This is the first in a new style of videos that I want to put out, which is me talking about tech. It might be about things in the news, it might be about little projects I've got going on. This one in particular is going to be about my impending network upgrade, or specifically internet upgrade. More on the network upgrade to come. As you know, my internet's been terrible for years. I have phone line internet over a copper wire. I get at best 80 down and 20 up, but that's all due to change. Thankfully, Virgin Media have just fibered my area and I'm gonna be able to get symmetrical two gigabit internet. Great, hurrah. What's the big deal? Why are you making a video about this? All good questions. Well, if it was one gig internet, I'd be pretty much good to go. But you know, in my home lab, I run dual firewalls in high availability. I've got some videos on that that you can go and check it out. And obviously most of my kit and probably most of your kit is either one gig or 10 gig. Yes, those 10 gig ports can talk down to sort of five gig, two and a half gig and one gig, but they're all used and it would be a big waste to use that for a 2.5 gig connection. So I need to go on a little bit of a shopping spree in order to make this work. So over the course of these videos, I'm gonna show you some of the thoughts around what I'm gonna purchase and why, but I also want to ask you guys out there if I'm making any mistakes. Are there some better products that I could be using for what I'm trying to achieve? So let's have a quick look at some of the press statements around this, and then I'm gonna show you some of the items that I found which I think are gonna sort this out for me. I'll also give you a quick review of my network so you can understand those of you who are watching this for the first time, what issues I might face in the future. So to anybody who's new to the channel, firstly, welcome. But secondly, you might face some of these issues in the near future. Internet speeds are only getting faster and to take full advantage of the speeds that are gonna be available, you will likely need to make some upgrades in your home. Now, when I buy this service on screen, it's obviously gonna come with the Virgin Media branded hub, which I'm not sure who manufactures that. I'll cover that in future videos. That will obviously come with 2.5 gig, I assume, out of the box which is great if you just have your probably standard setup, whereby you use your ISP router, you plug in your devices, your games consoles, whatever, and then most of your traffic is probably gonna go over the Wi-Fi. For me, however, and for anyone who's sort of a home lab tinkerer, you probably have your own firewall setup, your own switches, etc., and you wanna be putting this ISP router into modem only mode, or at least, bridging it so that you can take advantage of some more advanced features within your firewall. So just as a quick refresh, I'm going from 8020 to two gig symmetric. And as you can see on here, it's because of the XGS POM, which is kind of the latest and greatest, certainly at the consumer residential side uh, for fiber technology. The old Virgin Media Network is using DOCSIS 3.1, I believe, which was originally designed for cable TV. So most of that is for mass download, so you can get good download speeds, but the upload speed has always suffered. Yes, I think it is capable of significantly higher upload speeds, but it's never gonna meet the demands or certainly meet the capability that a new fiber network can provide. Frustratingly, for those people who have been long-time Virgin Media customers, you'll need to wait until your network is upgraded to the XGS Pond before you can take advantage of this speed. But I have a little sympathy for you. I've been on a phone line for way too long. Making these videos on YouTube, having to upload, do edits, is really hard work, especially when you're downloading things like multiple ISOs all the time. I'm having to do that basically in real time and do tons of edits out the back of it. In the near future, hopefully I can just be pulling containers in real time and talking you through that process and you'll see the basic end-to-end -end deployment of container services or whatever it is that I'm covering in that tutorial. So I don't exactly know when this is gonna go live, but they've been digging and building my area for the past three months and it's all gone quiet now. So 
hopefully that's a good sign it's not being abandoned and typically from talking with their marketing team it's usually sort of three to six months so with that in mind I want to give you a quick refresh of my network and why this is a little bit more bespoke so if I flash up my network here you can see at high level what I've got so currently I've got internet coming in up here goes into my ISP um, router which is in modem only mode and then goes into my firewall I've got all my services behind that actually if we peel away the layers and I'll jump into Proxmox in a moment this firewall here isn't a single firewall it's two firewalls one resides on my Dell server up here one resides on my Asus server here and so what do I actually do well I've only got one internet connection I don't have two so you might be thinking what wizardry is this well it's actually pretty simple I plug the ISP router or modem in this case into my switch which has its own dedicated VLAN and that basically is then split into a three port VLAN one is the internet in and then two is the internet out and each one of those ports goes into the respective firewalls WAN ports so that's how I'm able to split a single WAN connection between multiple firewalls so if we look in Proxmox here you'll see I've got my Proxmox Asus here's my XG passive and if we look at the other one we've got my XG uh, active so that's this one here so this is really good for me because as I'm always tinkering and breaking things it means that if I want to reboot this Dell machine for updates or for any kind of hardware maintenance I can basically shut this server down and then this firewall on the other machine will take over it's also good for my Kubernetes because the pods should fail over and all that good stuff it also means when I reboot it up everything comes back up and fails back over this again becomes the master because this one's got more horsepower than this one and it's also a really good concept to learn for bridging out and understanding your enterprise skills now the issue I've got is in my Proxmox Dell if I go into the networking tab you can see here that my WAN um, where is that um, it's actually this one down here. It's one of my quad 1 gigabit NICs. So obviously I'm not going to be able to get full 2.5 gig speed on that port. So what can I do? Well, it's the same situation for this Asus. And what I've decided to do is to choose a new adapter. So from a bit of scouring online, um, I came up with these QNAP devices. These are about £25 here in the UK, a little bit cheaper online, like places like eBay. Um, but the important thing is it uses the i225 chipset, which is an Intel chipset. And those are traditionally a lot more stable, robust. They've had years of support in things like Linux. You can get things from Realtek, but they've traditionally had a bad time in Linux. So this is the model I'm looking to get, it's the i225. Um, if you know of others which are better, I know there are things like the Intels, um, but they're usually three or four times more expensive, even on the second hand market. Um, but this to me feels like the sweet spot. It's gonna give me two 2.5 gig ports for about 25, 30 pounds. So what I'm gonna do is take this and basically in each of these machines here, I'm gonna pull out the one gig card and replace it with the 2.5 card. That should give me the capability to have up to 2.5 gigabits per second. The bit that I also now need to do is that switch, which I said was between my firewall and my servers. So there's actually a switch kind of here. Um, that is only one gig at the moment i'm using a unify switch it has 48 ports of one gig and four ports of 48 gigs of 10 gigs sorry um and so obviously that's not going to give me what i need so what i'm planning on buying is this one here the qsw 1105 5t so this is going to give me five ports of 2.5 gigs 
and Serve the Home gave this the kind of thumbs up their best 2.5 gig switch. So reasonably confident that this is going to be good. In terms of what it's actually going to be used for though, it's a glorified splitter. That's pretty much all it is. I don't even need something managed. I just need something that's going to enable me to split that single internet connection between two virtualized firewalls. And this should foot the bill. So that's kind of all I wanted to go through in this video. In future videos, and depending on what you tell me, <laughs> this is terrible, go for this product instead. That's kind of what I want to get out of this anyway. Um, the next video, I will go into actually acquiring that hardware and rejigging my network to accommodate it. I've not done a server build or a server teardown on this channel before, and that's something that I want to get into. I think it's really interesting to see how servers differ from uh, consumer equipment. And there's probably a number of you out there who are thinking, mm, do I really want to go down the server route? Do I understand it? What's going on here? What are the benefits? What are the quirks? Hopefully I can cover that off during that process. Off the back of that, I'm really excited to see what I can do with kind of two gig internet. There's going to be so many things in terms of cloud and almost real time collaboration, real time bandwidth that allows me to do things, um, full fat 4K real time, all that kind of stuff. So hopefully you enjoyed this little bit of a different take on it. As the channel banner says, it actually says tech talk and reviews. So reviews are coming soon. You might have seen my um, recent subs, my recent uh, sponsorship. Really excited to bring you that video. I think it's actually quite a cool device. Um, but also more sort of talk around tech. Um, I won't stop doing the tutorials, absolutely. But I think I've got something like close to 100 videos on tutorials. I've covered off a lot of the big ticket items and I now want to talk more openly about tech, where it's going, what I see in the enterprise space and how we can bring that into the home. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching, guys. I hope you enjoy this. Please drop some comments below. Let me know where I'm going wrong in this approach and if you've got any hardware recommendations that you think would be a better choice. Anyway, hit that like button, hit that subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care, everybody.